can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Interesting one for those guys is, did either of them know that that was the draw when they came here? Did they look that far ahead or were they professionals enough to go, do you know what, I don't really, it's just the next match, next match? Yeah, not sure. Yeah, be interesting not sure. one. I'm sure they would have had a little chat over dinner or something at some stage. Yeah. But just what I've seen from Mark, so yes, it's like he's never left, you yeah. know. I remember my first junior was 2006 at the Norbrecht Castle of all places. The first time, you know, I lived with Bodge Mark and yeah. it was absolutely awesome then and yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I feel like he's never left. Yeah, 2006 champion. World champion, that is. Well, for everything we said, you know, about how much the next break and a break in clearance could really feel like, oh, what a shot this is from Hitan. Well, I'll finish what I was saying anyway, but because it's the point being for Ronan is that he knows that coming to the table, that if he could break and clear there, how important that would be. But also he's experienced enough to know not worth chasing it. Yeah. And, you know, he made a ball there and he had a half a chance, but it wasn't worth it. And Hitan's pulled out a great shot here to give himself a half a chance, but that's what it is right now. Oh, oh, it's, it's a bit more than that out. now. That's two special ones on the trot. Well, one good positional shot here. It's a great chance. Did the white to run a little further. Yeah, I, for me, I was the the ready's nearest to. I was thinking if you could just land straight on that top left, you're out because it's then four rolling shots. He looked like he was trying to get a little bit further up the table yeah. and play this into the middle, which means he's got to move the cue ball here. Played that well, though. But again, he's still moving the cue ball. OK, so he shouldn't be a problem for him, but the one he's going to have to take is going to be was originally his last ball. He's got to bring this back and anywhere near straight on the right centre and you're good but it's the other way around than what he was playing and if he's come too far he's caused a problem for himself unless the 8 goes in the bottom left corner yeah. or the left middle I think he goes in the left middle oh he's over hit it and I don't think he looked at the no. Apple. It does look like he goes in the left yeah. centre. But for me, this whole this whole mess, obviously two great shots for Hitten to get himself in. But from there, he had one shot to play, and that was to land straight in the top left corner, which was natural for him. Yeah. And he tried to get onto it into the middle. And ever since then, he's been a bit like the previous frame, where he's just been chasing the ball. He's just been chasing that cue ball into... And it's looked subtle. Looked, You know, we're talking about being out of position by two, three rolls at each time. But eventually... That yeah. means your eight ball snookered. It's close. Oh. It's close. It's gone in. <laughs> Unbelievable from Hitan. Absolutely not what he played. What a fluke that is. For me, he's taken something off that one, and it's going to be dry. It is indeed. Got a lot of screw on that one. Maybe half a tip low. We often talk a lot about Gareth having a fantastic break, because in terms of cue ball control, and in terms of power through the pack and all the rest of it, it's very, very, very good. There's few who hit the break harder. There's few, there's few who control the cue ball as well when doing that. But I reckon over the last sort of year or so, if you took a percentage from successful breaks, Gareth would be nowhere near the top. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I completely agree with that. He can, it seems to be that that break just, it will go wandering a little bit even when he's flushing it, whereas others seem to, everyone goes through spells where it disappears and, and there's no reason for it. But yeah, I could certainly, I'd love to see the stats on that. Also love to see the stats on the power and he's right up there with anybody on that front. 
Well, talking about Mark Selby's cue ball being perfect in the opening frame, he's a roll short here. He's okay. He's judged that quite well, actually. He knew he had the reds. Yeah, he wants to play the bottom one here. It's a little bit thinner than is ideal. He might use a red again here. If he can hold, he will. But if he has to use a red, then he may do. He wanted yeah. that full ball, if possible. But half no, ball's not the end of the world. He's happy with that because yeah. it just opens the window from the bottom right to the left centre. Actually, that kind of makes everything so much easier. Pick a spot here where this cue ball lands next. In the end, decided to leave left centre and go up the table, but he's still in good shape. Selby has had two opportunities and he's about to go 2-0 in front and it's been pretty pristine so far. Yeah, faultless. Yeah, there was maybe a point 20 years ago in the golden era as we like to call it that you maybe couldn't have necessarily got away with that yep. as much. Cue ball oh, again. Oh, wow. Two on the bounce and this time it is Mark's error. We topped it. Yeah, he just mishit this one completely. First one of this we've one of these we've seen in the tournament from Mark. But actually, we know because of having the conversations with the players that he's got so much topspin on that. He might be watching that at home and thinking, "Well, he's got s he's, he must have hit the cue ball at the top." Actually, he's probably hit the cue ball somewhere in the middle. <laughs> the level of, if you almost view the cue ball as a circular target, the difference between topping it off there and hitting it straight up the middle is so, so fine. Yeah, it is. It's not, especially when you're trying to hit with power. You know, it's, you know he's a, probably a tip high there. He said in his interview with you at the start of the day, which we played just before the, the start of the match, that, you know, he, he, was trying, he was trying to play a screw shot. Well, he was trying to play a stun or a top shot and ended up screwing it. Then, yeah. you know, these are the differences that when you do take time out of the game, you, you can easily just forget. Key shot coming up here for Gareth. It's the red by the eight ball that's a problem. And I believe he's going to try and solve it here. And he solves it in very nice style. Yeah, lovely. I think a lot of players in that situation, certainly the way I was thinking was that you play off the yellow, but Gareth plays off the cushion and off the yellow. It makes it a much bigger target to play that shot, but also guarantees that yellow getting completely out of the way. If you play it directly off the yellow, the yellow goes towards the red and eight ball, and there's no guarantees there. It's crisp, it's clean. This has been faultless so far from both players. Absolutely faultless. We've seen five frames of pool. And the only thing to report is Mark Selby was a roll of the cue ball short once. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> it has literally been perfect. Well, eight ball flies in. Don't worry, not a golden break. He actually took something off that break. That was a lot slower than the previous ones. Maybe saying to himself, I want to make sure I control the cue ball here. Gets kicked to the right, but all that happens here though, worth pointing out, eight ball just comes back up, goes onto the eight ball spot. And then because Mark made other balls, he stays at the table. Had it been dry other than the eight ball, 
and it would be Gareth at the table. Time running. But it is an awkward layout. We've said that a couple of times in this match and been proved to be wrong. Looks like he has the perfect angle on the first shot to develop the bad ball, but not guaranteed to be on anything off it. But it lands perfect for him. And now a great chance to win this match. Yeah, this is the moment you feel. And just even from the body language, Gareth Potts at the top of your picture, you feel like he sort of expects that. Yeah. I think when he looks back at this match, you can look at the... If he does go on to lose, then you can look at the, the misclearance when he had an awkward chance and he'd done the hard work and just let one positional shot get away and couldn't recover. You could look at that moment, but also a couple of in-off breaks where we've gone straight into the top left and top right-hand corner. You know, very that small margins, the most. but I think those breaks will annoy him the most. You know, mm. to go straight in off, very frustrating. But he knows that the thing is, when you look at the match as a whole, you know, you can look at that and, and analyse it and say that, but then Mark's done it three times. <laughs> so it's been one of those, it's a strange match from that front. Oh, well, now then. Is he OK? I think so. He seems happy enough. He still has other options. Yeah, I don't think he's on the one to the bottom left. He's on to the bottom right, and it's thin. No, he's oh, he's in. He's oh, still he's just up. on it. Yeah, he's OK. Yeah, and it's tight. And in it goes. It's a lovely shot. Still feels a little awkward here, actually. I think if he was dead straight on this, wouldn't be a problem. He's got to play a shot. So is he accepting the double? Well... He can come across the table. He could, I thought he might be looking to clip in the middle a what, little while ago, and he, he stayed away from it. It's not really fit the rest of the balls, which is why I've kind of been surprised he's left it so long. Oh, played that exceptionally well. Gets perfect on it. I mean, that's a lovely shot. In it goes. This for the match. Mark Selby beats Gareth Potts in a fantastic match. Eight minutes to go. Stevie Dempsey needs to win the next four frames. Needs a quick, quick one. Well, if you can see a yellow. I almost just feel like, you just look at Stevie there. And I just feel like it, it might just focus him a little bit and just think, right, yeah. the match has, got, match has gone now. I can't control it. Going now it's just yeah. about... You know, can I do it? He's going your long yellow for the easier, easier layout. The reds are there. Could have done with that bouncing off bottom cushion a bit. He had quite a nice red to the centre there, and I don't think the, the layout was too bad on reds, but... I think he can hold this to play on the one on the rail. Yeah, he's sneaking. Yeah, that was his plan. That's a good played shot. It, played it nicely, that. That's a really good shot. Yeah. Needs to keep playing good shots. It's not easy, but yeah, th this next shot is is the one. You could play for blue spot area. Play the next yellow top left, or oh, he's got into that cue ball too much. Just stretching there, just sort of po poke down at the cue ball. Just put a bit <laughs> Such of such a, a tough shot. That yeah, that's one where you really want your thirty seconds there. Well, you already used the extension. To be fair, I think that's one we really need a couple of more inches in height. <laughs> oh, yeah, him as well. <laughs> that, or, or, or a bit of a mini button. Oh, Stevie D, what a shot! And he's still not going to get any nudge. What a shot to pull out there, and absolutely no run. Can he keep digging? And he keep his Pro Series 5 hopes alive. Oh, he's in. Oh, what a shot. Oh, what a shot. He's on that, is he? He's on that. I think. He deserves to be. Shot of the week so far from Stevie Dempsey. Scott. 
been. Oh, this is outrageous. How's he got out from here? That is an unbelievable Still got a black sequence of shots. Still got a black to buy here to make it worthwhile. Good shot. Brilliant. To keep himself in the competition, that is finish of the weekend so far from Stevie Dempsey, and that will take some topping. Yeah. You know how it works by now, folks. Six red balls. Cue ball and object ball must stop. Quickest time wins. Stevie Dempsey has come back from the dead in this match. I wonder if he's going to chalk his cue in the middle of this one. He's making sure enough's on yeah. it. We've seen some good times already in the six reds. It's going for a little stunt. Oh, that's nice. If that red... Get, oh, he has yeah, to wait for the red to move time. and now he can fly. He needs that one. Stop. Oh, he's got stun, stun. Bottom right. Oh, he's going top. Oh, that's good. This is beautiful. This is 20 seconds. This is beautiful is from Stevie out? Dempsey. Brilliant. That's, wow. And you could tell he, he's not going to celebrate yet because he knows that might not be that. Yeah. But that was a satisfied reaction. And the farmer gets to work. 20.28. That's good a break, lovely good split. Break. Oh. Oh, he's going to struggle. Early miss, but he can go quick here. I feel he possibly... He didn't feel it. He had no time to check, check oh, it, Oh, he? he's going to concede. Yeah. The farmer's frustration. Stevie Dempsey comes back from the dead. Break here now from Mark. Give himself a chance. Hits them well, but looks like it's going to be the dry break. Yeah, this is the chance that John would have wanted. And reds, uh, well, yeah, I would have said reds are probably the balls here because they all go, they all have a pocket. And he can play the one up the top right first, it's a straight pot. And then work his way down, I believe, if he can get on the one in the middle. If he's straight on this, he can just push through and have a choice of three reds. If he is straight on, on this, then he's in, in great shape because they sort of are, the connections are perfect, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So the beauty of eight ball pull, you just never know. You are never safe in this uh, in this game. Mark has hit that break just as well as he's hit the others. Controlled the white ball ni nicely, but didn't get a ball. Yeah, Not to mention that, but the layout's quite nice for John as well. It could have gone very awkward, so sometimes it really is in the lap of the gods. the red above the yellow in the middle of the table goes to the bottom right which is why he's gone this way around I thought he was going to go the other way around for the the one he's just played would connect to the red into the right centre but it goes down the table that's why he's gone this way we've moved into the 15 seconds a shot part of the match so the final 10 minutes so John does need to move a little bit quick around the table just to not allow that clock to become a factor yeah he's just if he's straight on this, then he's fine. He can he can run through, but I think he's going to try and stun it in. Ideally, that's what he wants to do and come down. Oh, dear. He's going to be so frustrated because he was in perfect position again in this frame and it's suddenly becoming very awkward. I think it's been the culmination of the last two chances that he's missed. has just slightly dented his confidence, Simon. Yeah, and he's gone for the... Very, very tough plant there. He could have clipped that back, but he was going nowhere with the cue ball, so goes for the plant. But yeah, it's three straight chances of this sort of level that he's missed on the bounce. Yeah. Now they weren't absolutely easy, but they were they were sort of clearances that we we've kind of become accustomed to see John make fairly comfortably. Yeah, and no matter how mentally strong you are, you know he's probably forgiven himself for the first mistake, but then the second one. Uh, it sort of gets on top of you no matter how strong you are mentally and I think that's just dented his confidence slightly especially as Mark has just not let up you know every mistake John's made has been magnified by Mark Selby yeah Mark made his own error in the opening frame but 
you know, similar sort of tricky-ish clearance, but one you only because of the level they play at, you almost expect them to get, but it wasn't that easy. Yeah. But other than that, he's been flawless in this match. Takes its toll. It really is so impressive, the pool that he's playing. Everything is so measured, so controlled. It's a joy to watch. A couple of balls away now. Plays a short position, plays it beautifully. And this eight ball for another victory for Mark Selby. And in it goes, brilliant performance from him, turning around a 3-0 and 4-2 deficit. And he books his place in the quarterfinals. So this is the first quarterfinal. The other three quarterfinals look like this. Eddie Barker will take on our fan dad. Great to see the Batman having a run. And then we've got Mark Selby versus Mark Fleming. Great run to the quarters for Flambeau. And the winner, the winners rather, of the last two matches, the last 16, Whelan Chippy and Jimmy Chris, will play each other in the final quarter. Stevie cannot buy a ball off his break. I'm, I'm convinced he made a deal with the devil. I really <laughs> am. He's had no luck in this match. And I'd <laughs> he had a lot the round before. <laughs> at least I think he's he's 500 quid up compared to that so you'd probably rather have the look yeah. earlier um, sometimes you don't, you don't mind uh, having a dry break if you're covering cushions with most of the balls uh, I think these are these are tricky yeah if you're gonna this is probably the, the best dry break that he's had yeah. the previous ones have been pretty straightforward this isn't No surprise to trade take these on, but it's tough. Yellow on the right side rail is, is an awkward one. It does cut up. Um, he'll develop the one by the black now off this one. Has he stayed on it? Looks like it. He's still, still walking. Yeah, he's looking at the cutting angle of that ball you just mentioned. Oh, he tried to go down for that yellow at the bottom of the table. Has he had a rub? Yeah, he has. He's still okay. And he, he might be in that one up the reel now. Yeah, I think he is. If he is, he's had an unbelievable touch because that's a difficult ball. He might. Is he going to still take one at the bottom? He is. Wow. He shows how confident of a player he is, isn't he? He knows he can pot them from anywhere. <laughs> yeah, the fact that he even considered it was brave. That's a great shot. Is he over oh, he just got a bounce. Well, now he's chasing. Now, me personally, I love watching Craig Waddingham chasing because <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's coming next. He can pot them off lampshades, but this is, this is now a really tough finish. It looks like he's got a bit of a natural angle here to come across and play on the one on the right. But how do you solve this one on the bottom rail? needs to get a nice angle um, on the one on the right or, or double it. He's gone into it, it's brave. Well, he has got to pull out an absolute world star shot here. He still landed on the cut on the, on the, on the one on the bottom reel. So, so he has got that option available to him. I just wonder, can he almost play into the eight ball here? And, and hold, oh, this will be a worldly clearance. Very thin. Now he's avoided it, wants, to, wants a bit of a nudge. That was the only problem with that, is going up and down twice. That red did play very big there. Traffic, isn't it? The white pole's moving. Can he pull, can he pull out another double? Does, okay, I wonder if he can, he can come off the, uh, the reel first and come off the back of it. He's playing the cutback double. Or treble. treble. 
Oh, he's made the eight ball. Oh, wow. Oh, Craig Waddingham was digging very, very deep, but in the end, he's been buried alive. <laughs> Needs to start with the ball here from Craig. What do you feel? All oh, those haven't come apart very nicely. Stevie's already out of his chair. And has he got the chance? Yeah, he didn't cue through that, did he? Yeah, that was a resigned sort of look from Craig Waddingham. Wasn't a very good break, was it, from Craig? You don't often see that. So Stevie's going yellows. And he's got a chance. I can tell you as well, Chris Melling is through against Jimmy Carney. He wins 7-2. So Sean Chibberfield versus Chris Melling as a quarter final. That one won't take long. First, yeah. <laughs> That could be over in 20 minutes if those two get going. That's going to be on uh, table two for you. Uh, I'd imagine uh, Chris will want a little break, so it probably won't start immediately, but uh, we'll be starting very soon. Eddie Barker versus Arfan Dad is getting underway on table three. And if you stay with us on table one, we'll see the end of this match, and we'll see Mark Selby versus Mark Fleming. Are we going to a decider, or can Stevie Dempsey finish the job? All the yellows do go. They all have a pocket. And uh, but to be fair, um, to win the match, this is quite nice, like him. It? Yeah. I don't think he's he's come far enough in that yellow. He might have to go into the red or screw back for the yellow nearest him. Oh, he's played that oh, lovely. Oh, wow. That's a lovely shot. And these are absolutely all there now. The only the only one he's got to be wary of is the furthest right of the yellows. I don't think that goes bottom right. Has he got the angle? He's gonna no, he's going to come well across well. here. This is the key shot. Gets this right, he's into another semi-final. This is cash ball. And he knows it, calls the extension, lines it up, checks it once, checks it twice. What a competitor. What a fighter. He's just had a bit of a big bounce there and this one needs potting. His big issue is he wants to avoid those reds but he also wants to hold the cue ball. Big shot. It's there, as judged so well from Stevie Dempsey. So the side he's put on it to, to force the wide out over that side of the table, that, that's a great shot. Stevie Dempsey, what a victory. Incredible. And look what that meant to him as well. You don't usually get too much emotion out of Stevie D, but that one meant a lot. That's what he was looking for earlier on. Yeah, this time it flies in and the split's still good. A little bit congested in the bottom half, but it's still a good chance. Yeah, I think they all go. Strangely, probably the worst he hit it out of every break in the match in terms yeah, of it was bouncing down just a jumped, little bit yeah, and it made it yeah. jump. I'm not saying he hit it bad, but compared to the others. Yeah, the other ones he's absolutely flushed. Yeah. But actually, yeah, the split's incredible. It looked a little bit congested when we saw the, the balls flying around. That's but every yellow here has the pocket. Bad. It's gone a bit too far than he would have liked, but he's on the one into the middle. I don't think he's played on the one in the middle, but he's on it. I think he wanted to be on the one on the bottom of the, of the racking line. Actually, it was the perfect ball to be on, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he could have played that. I, I, th I thought he was trying to... He, he kind of leant into the table, trying to slow the white down a little bit when, when he played the first one. So. I suppose you put your, you put that cue ball there and you've got options. Which is always good. 
same as here, you put it into an area. Nice little cannon to the red would be nice. Choice of both. Well, just a little bit. That's perfect. Love to have been straight in on the one to the right of the cue ball now, but as you say, that cue ball really slid off the bottom cushion. Yeah, I think he was aiming for that red because that red would have would he would have been perfect on both balls, um, and, and he could have gone either way. But yeah, he would have loved to have been on that one to the right. Oh, has I he? Think I stuck to it, you know. It's tight. It looked like it almost it almost stuck to it. Oh, look at that! Oh, I don't think he's on that, you know. He's bending it. Incredible. Perfect. That's a what great a shot. shot that is. That's a great shot. Just an absolute machine. And Mark Selby is into the semi finals. Another brilliant performance once again from Mark. Cue balls, second to none. I think for Orphan to have half a chance in this match, he needs to play. At 90 plus percent, I think if he doesn't, then I think Mark will run away with it. With that in mind, when you know you've got to come in and play at that level, does that is it quite, almost quite clear? You, you know, there's clarity in that. You, you've got to go out there. You've got to play your best game. Sim simple as that. Well, yeah. Um, if we look at the if we look at the match in a whole, it's probably one of our fans' biggest matches. Yeah, he's ever had. This to Mark is just yeah. <laughs> as good as a practice session. <laughs> you know I mean, like the, the title and and obviously the financial reward of it is is nothing nothing to Mark. That's not saying that he's not going to try because obviously he's, he's going to try his best. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very tough for our fan to win because I think the first couple of rounds, Mark, yeah, maybe could have gone out, but I think now he's in full flow. Is, is going to be a very tough nut to crack. Well, that's the thing. It feels like he's getting... I felt like he's been incredibly strong from the start, but the, the cue ball's getting tighter and tighter as the matches go on as well. It's yeah. incredible the level that he's played at. And he's going to get first opportunity here. Just that one yellow left at the top of the table to to deal with. I'm not sure if he's actually got an angle where he, he could possibly go on to it now. No, I, th I thought he could have maybe stumped through the gap and gone up to the bolt line. But he might be able to just play this one and come across, or he might be leaving it last. Well, we've been raving about his cue ball, and he's happy to yeah. to play that big positional shot if it's required. I think he half missed a trick there. I think he should have played that because it was a sort of natural stun shot off the rail. Because he's going to have to play a good shot now. He's going to have to land literally a quarter ball low on it. Anything apart from that is no good. Yeah, if he's too short, he's too thin. If he's too high, he's too straight. Too low. It's no good. Yeah, just quit on that shot. Just a fraction. Yeah, it's... Uh, he's got... Well, he's not got a shot, but... It, I don't know if the yellow goes into the top pocket, past the red... It, if it doesn't, then maybe play the red, yellow off the red into the bottom left bag. But he's, he's very much chasing now. Something we haven't seen much from him throughout this whole couple of days, the whole event. But knowing Mark as his snooker background, you know that he's going to make things very awkward, whatever he does after this shot. I, don't, I wouldn't have thought he would throw the frame away. Well, let's but see what he's got. Is he going for the big double? He certainly was not happened. So first chance for Mark Selby disappears. And this is vital now that really that Arfan wins this frame and gets his a name on the board. And tries to put a little bit of pressure on Mark. That's the main thing for, for Arfan here. He doesn't want to let Mark have it all his own way and then him chasing the finishes down. He wants it the other way. Straight's no good. Just enough, just a little bump. I think the red passes the yellow into the centre, and if it does, then he can just top it, literally just play the cue ball up towards the eight ball, that sort of a line. 
and that's as good as uh, frame number one, I think. Yeah, he's in perfect shape here, isn't he? Just enough angle just to get where he wants to, which isn't, to be honest, too far into the top end of the table. Helps him if the bottom one of the two together goes. He was just having a good look to see whether it did. Yeah, ideally the top, the one closest, well, the one... It doesn't really make a difference, to be honest. I think we're trying to make something... Wasn't expecting him to no, put the cue ball there on the jaw, though. I thought he yeah, had just enough angle just to, to punch top, it up. Yeah, yeah, top side of the jaw. and Now he sort of like needs the, bottom, the, the one closest to the eight ball to go, the bottom one. Yeah. Because he's going to be running the cue ball back down the table, I think. Unless he's not got as much angle as it looks like on the camera. Big error from our fan. Never really got hold of the cue ball in that visit and just looked a little nervy the whole visit, to be honest. And you know, It's not necessarily because of who he's playing. It's more just the fact that the stage he's playing on, the semi-finals, furthest he's been with Ultimate Paul. He knows this is a very big deal for him. It may take him a couple of frames to settle in here. but going to be any mistakes second time around for Mark Selby and he does get the first frame on the board it's quite incredible to watch really it looks like he's tapping the pack and they explode yeah once again balls flying in for our fan oh the cue ball very unfortunate although I guess what what you'd say there Jack is when he lets the cue ball run loose you can get some some bad rubs there But that really is, oh, yeah, I feel your pain, fan. I really do. That is tough. The only sort of saving grace for, for our fan there is that the, there is a bit of a cluster up there at the bottom right-hand side. There is a developing shot. They're not as easy as just clearing straight up, I don't think. So he's got to do a little bit of something with the white anyway. Or does the red above the yellow go into the bottom left pocket? If it does, then he can sort of play this one into the top now, then play the one on the right, and then play the red in between the black and the red. Yeah, it does look like it could go. If that goes, then all of a sudden he's not a disaster there. It clearly doesn't, because he's going to play into it but he's going to be pushing this towards the side rail. He actually wants it on the side rail. Too hard. Yeah, he wanted to push that onto the side rail. So then he actually kept it in the open by slightly overhitting it. He's, he's brought it back into the woods of the yellows. What's he spotted here? So the red goes in the right centre, the other one's what, in play what as well. What about red into the centre, red into the bottom left and screw behind, and then the red into the, the left centre maybe I don't know if that red underneath the yellows goes into the left centre oh, he's just come round to have a look yeah I think it's tight but I would have thought right the clock's going on him oh, he's got his extension he's okay that dunce so he's going to go into the breaker and he's on nothing yeah so although I'm not going to say nothing yet <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing yet. Yeah, we've seen a but couple. Our of fan will be sort of pleased about the in-off, looking at the table once he sat down because he had a lot of work to do there. Mark did. S slipped on him, and this was the opportunity that that our fan wanted from his own break, and luckily for him. Mark's letting back in. Just not sure if the occasion might get to off a little bit as, yeah. as the match 
the match goes on. Yeah, I, for me, I feel it's more the the occasion, the fact it's a major semi-final, more than the fact that he's playing Mark Selby that would yeah. would potentially, if, if anything's going to. I'm not sure. I think that Mark's got that sort of aura about him that it's like a a dominance of the table, even though it's not his game that he plays. He's clearly very confident, even having been so far away, even with not his, even his cue. Yeah. He's using. Using Vicky's cue. Chris crazy. I'm not sure there's many people on the planet that can turn up to a weekend and play against all the best. Yeah, in well, this field to come up, and you and know, it, it would be an unbelievable achievement. Yeah. Well, uh, it already is, but if he goes on and wins it. As it stands at the minute, he's odds on to. Uh, as it stands at the minute, I'd probably put him odds on to win the title. Fans going through this one. He's got a bit more control of this cue ball now. It feels like he's he's where he wants to be through this visit, which did, wasn't how he felt for his first couple of chances. So that winning that previous frame just giving him some confidence. I just don't like this hand on the table and stunning into the side rail. I just think you're asking for trouble. You can't generate enough power there. Oh, this time he gets it right up the middle yeah. of the table. That's, oh, that's, that's heartbreaking. The last one was very, very unlucky. This time he got the cue ball absolutely perfect and did not deserve this at all. Yeah, that was as good as a break that as you can hit. And the layout is very very good here for Mark yeah he's going to just flick the yellow on the side rail over the middle pocket and that's pretty much uh, the frame I think barring a disaster I think the eight ball does go past the red into the bottom right pocket yeah there's hard to make a sort of case for where this one could go wrong they're yeah, just laid out absolutely possible. perfectly it was definitely possible. I mean, if, if, you watched, well, if you watch some of us play, it's it definitely possible, possible for but, me earlier but, on. Uh, that. <laughs> but for the way that Mark's no, playing, no. for someone like Mark, he, he's hundred percent on every shot. He's he's, ne he's never going to make any silly mistakes. Just want to land flat on the cushion, just where he's queuing up there now. So just inside the red, any angle so the cue ball can go to the right hand side, and then he'll screw back sort of towards the, the middle of the table. Really, oh, he's under hit that a little bit. He did play for the rail there where he put his hand. Good news for him is at least it's not straight, so he can just get yeah. the cue ball out. Yeah, it'd just be a soft, a soft screw with with left hand side. You know, just pop it out to sort of where his elbow is now, I think. That sort of area. And the, the eight ball must go into the bottom left pocket. the break this time our fans very unfortunate break where he got kicked in off but it's Mark Selby that opens up a two frame lead wow cue ball flying and this time he's going to get the chance oh and if that eight ball stays on the table it's horrible but it's dropped in and now it's a good opportunity few seconds wait for the eight ball to come back up put that on the table because our fan made other balls he gets the opportunity in this frame and you'd be happy with this with an opportunity to win the match well yeah he's got a chance and that's the main thing and nothing's really safe there's no clusters so it's, it's all about picking the right pattern and, and going about it 
whichever way you feel comfortable. Just the red nearest the yellow on the left-hand side that's just a little awkward. Yeah, I think I'd be stunning the one in the middle now, taking the one into the top right, the one into the boot pocket. Oh, see, he's getting a bit on the wrong side of stuff here. It's the 15 seconds of shot. It's the first he's visit, short. It's the first visit in the whole match that. at 15, and it's amazing how it catches you out. He's short on that, and he's going to be short on time again here. It's going to be bleeping. Now... This is not nice. Hampered queuing. I think he's not. I don't think he's hampered. You think, think he's, he's, okay. he's okay? You think he's to the side? Because he's going to be playing it with left hand side. Yeah. Yeah. He's and okay. He can spin this and get right down to the middle pocket. Oh, how close was that? Excellent it's shot, perfect. though. Right to the wire for an excellent now, shot from our fan dad. Do you screw back and take it in the same pocket or you take it long and for the, and that's it and that's your win? I think I'd come back. I think I'd just come back out. I really would. Our fan agrees. Two shots away. The biggest shot he's playing about to play. And he's got it right. Right in the heart of the Set. pocket. And this eight ball for the win. And our fan dad is in a final with ultimate Paul. He knocks out Mark Selby on his return to the sport. It was almost like he got put into the 12th round. And, you, and someone says to, to their fighter, you need a knockout. Otherwise, you're, you're losing a pretty big decision here. And he's just come out swinging and landed that seminal blow. Tough first break, though, for Stevie. Straight in off. That will irritate him. Second chance to Sean Chibberfield. Yeah, n normally Dempsey's pretty good at getting the cue ball straight up and down the table. So he'd be pretty disappointed with that. But one thing you will say about Stevie is the, the way that he backed up that win over Phil Harrison with his win over Craig Wadding. It was two absolute chalk and cheese performances. He, he was so poor against Phil Harrison, but he was he was awesome against Craig Wadding. Really awesome. Yeah, and, and, and when you win a match like that where you, you feel like you should have lost it, you, you do feel like, um, you feel like you're already out of the tournament and actually it's just uh, anything what happens after that is a bonus. And I've been there, you know, you, you should lose a match. You end up getting away with it. And anything after that, you know, you, you just play so freely, to be honest. Well, Chippy knocks in a great pot there on short position. I always get so impressed when you watch Chippy because he, he doesn't even throw a feather in there. He's he just makes pots. I think Gareth said it best in the, in the studio um, at the start of tonight. There's not many who make the game look easier when they're playing well. You just watch Chippy in full flow and you're like, this, this is not this easy. Yeah, and I, I did actually hear what Gaz said up before the game, actually. And he obviously he was saying that Chippy, like if you think someone's going to maybe ma make a mistake, it might be Chippy and... I agree with what Gaz said. Um, well, but to your point. Yeah, but I mean, it's just when when you when you're playing Chippy and he's in full floor and he's everything's coming off, you just think, All right, what what am I supposed to do against him? You know. Well, he's played a great shot there. The the cannon he played on the yellow didn't go particularly kindly, but he's recovered the situation. One good pot away from two nil. Crunches it in. Is he on the eight ball? Is it? It could be tight, like you know. It looks like he's playing it. Yeah, he had to turn it over a little bit, and it goes. He did, and he he put a lot aside on that, and he's still potted in the top of the pocket. So actually, that probably was quite tight. Yeah. Slight overcorrection, but a good contact nevertheless. Is he going to get a ball? Yes, he is. I say what, this is a nice split, Aaron. Just at first glance, this looks really nice. 
it is, and I mean that was the last ball rolling there. If you watch, if you watch these balls here, literally the last ball. Stevie thought he was dry. You saw there, he almost gave up the ghost a little bit. Can't blame him. And I mean, Chipperfield would have been half out of his seat as well there. <laughs> so. That's a nice opening shot. The only little bit of work he's got to do, he's always going to go yellows here, but the only bit of work he's got to do is on the yellow on the bottom rail. Yeah, and you've got the two balls near the bottom of the table. He's going to use one of them to try and develop his other bad yellow. And he will be looking to get on that as soon as he can. Certainly won't want to leave that until his last last two balls no so I'd, I would assume whatever he does now is he's, he's trying to leave that shot next he goes into it there that'll do and he, he had a lot of he had a lot of um, he had a lot of side on that shot he did shot. He played it well such a good curious to Stevie Dempsey Heard from Chippy in his interview there when Ultimate Pool began. He almost, he didn't think, you know, Stevie was sort of in that sort of upper echelon of players in that sort of top five or six. But his mind has been changed over the course of the last few years. I'm guessing you'd subscribe to that as well. Yeah, and um, I, I would say everyone else would have agreed with that as well. You know, um, especially when I started, I, I wouldn't say Dempsey was somebody that I was worried about drawing whereas now <laughs> yeah. um, if you if you drew Dempsey you'd be thinking oh it's a very tough game now you know he's he's really upped his game in the last couple of years I always think when I'd imagine when you're in the draw you know you, you lads are so good you don't necessarily fear anyone but there's certain names that you pull out of the hat and you're like okay you, f you feel certain ways about Stevie's one of them players that you think right I've got to be on this because if I'm not on my game, he will find a way to win. He's so difficult to play. He never seems to make a bad decision. Of course, yeah, and he's not he's probably not one of the players that does all the flamboyant shots and although he has done at times this weekend, he's not <laughs> yeah. one of them players that you know is pulling out massive shots, but he's somebody that you never think you're gonna get an easy game against. No. He, he he does all he does everything well, but the thing he does better than most he he, he stays in games. He's so difficult to put away. But that is in the hands of his opponent, Stevie Dempsey, breaking for the victory. Oh, how's that dry? Stevie Dempsey cannot believe it. Where's the cue ball? They're both having a good look. This could be safe, you know, the cue ball. As if this red rests on the cue ball. It <laughs> might, I think it has as well. <laughs> I mean, that's an amazing reaction, isn't it? Oh. Oh, Chippy's at the table, which is the one thing he was hoping for. But what? What can you do here? Maybe he shouldn't have been open for that from where that's landed. I don't know if he can... <sighs> I mean, answers on a postcard, folks. I mean, possibly just rest onto the, the yellow on the bottom of the table. Yeah, and over to you, he says. He hated doing that. He wanted to be able to impact it, but he can't. has to wait. Does yes. Stevie have an attacking option? It's a nice shot, he's not really left Dempsey anything to go out here. I think he'll just be looking to play a similar shot, leave the cue ball around where it is now. And they've run out of options for playing that shot again. So Chippy's now got to find something. Has he got the gap for that red, just right of where the blue spot would be, up to the top right? Is that where he's lining up? Yeah, I, th I think both players will be going for, well, looking to go for reds from here. Certainly the better colour set. I think he's taking this on. Oh, what a shot. Whew. What a shot. 
possibly now does he go for the double on on his bad red he's not considering it eight ball now open to Sean Chipperfield going game needs to get rid of the red closest to the pocket as early as possible why oh, is he playing the plant yeah, he's got the plan, and, and I'm not sure now, I'm thinking maybe this bad red I'm on about on the left-hand side, does it go in the, in the left centre? Yeah, I th it's either that or long, I think that's got to be the plan. I mean, he goes in the left centre, but what ball do you get on after potting it in there? Is he thinking top three for the eight ball? You can leave it to last. It's, 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 it's tight angle, though, um, I think he's got to play it before then. And he is doing. Yeah, that was it, tough. It was a lot tighter than it looked at, and that's why I was thinking, you know, what is he, what is he hoping to do with that ball? Frustration etched all over the face of Sean Chipperfield. Like I said before, after putting that first red to the top right, he did have a chance to double that ball. He was pretty good on it. Um, I'm not saying it was the right or wrong shot, but he, he was certainly on it then. 15 second shot clock in play. Oh, Sean Chipperfield. He said to us earlier, he, he wants to break through this ceiling. He's had a lot of semi finals with Ultimate Pool as a singles player. Yet to make it to the big dance on one of these Pro Series events. It looks like now it may be. The same story again for him. Stevie Dempsey, though, still has to get there. How's your flick? It's okay. Eight ball now goes to the right middle. Yeah, so now where that red's gone near the eight ball, he'd be wanting to leave the yellow into the bottom left as his last ball. Oh, look at the grip he's got there. Talks about how hard it is to get the side to grip off these cushions. That's, that's checked back a long way. Yeah, he needed a lot of side on that shot. And to be honest, as long as he pots this one now, bridging over the red, he's, he's pretty much done. Wow, this has been a super performance. He was as close to being out of the tournament as you can be in his match with Phil Harrison, Stevie Dempsey was dead in the water. But since coming through it, he has put in two awesome performances against world-class opposition. Two balls away. And the eight ball waits. for his third straight Pro Series final. It's there. Yeah, um, but the one thing I do look at, and you look at the whole tournament, and there's always a moment, and we've seen it with a few of your titles as well, you'll be the first to say it, where there's always been a moment where a player's had an opportunity maybe to, to sort of put you in a bad spot or even in, in in Stevie's case you know Phil Harrison probably should have knocked him out or I'd say almost certainly should have knocked him out and didn't I didn't watch that but was he 6-2 up yeah 6 two, and, and he um, just a complete uh, meltdown really time fouled with 20 seconds to go when all he had to do was pot a ball and oh, wow. waste the clock and allowed Stevie to make a 20 second clearance to take it to a 6 red shootout and you know and that was there was obviously chances before yeah. that as well so uh, it almost you look at a player when that happens and you think, oh, it, yeah. it is his name on the title? Yeah, that's right. The thing is, that any, anybody who wins one of these events, you do need that little bit of run at, at the right time. Yeah, and like you say, fortunately for me, I've had it for the last six or seven months, but, um, yeah. Might be Stevie's time this time. May well be. He definitely deserves deserves a title anyway. Yeah, it's been incredible what he's... Not that our fan doesn't, I'm just no, saying. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Do you think for Stevie, 
the two titles he has won. And he's, he was vocal about it last year, that, that his success with Ultimate Ball has always come away from the Pro Series. He did make the semi-final the very first event, but his events that he had success in were away from it. You know, winning the Grand Slam, winning the Champions League. So for him, I think winning a Pro Series would just be an extra special for that, that reason to do it at the Pro Series weekends as well, because they do feel a little bit different. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, I, the titles that Stevie's won is obviously the Monday and Wednesday night, which go on for, what was it 15 weeks, 20 Well, the, the Grand Slam was a weekend event, but it was oh, a weekend was event in, at the at the sort of home venue, if you like, from yeah. the ball in, in Newcastle under Lyme. Yeah, I think um, if... if if you could say, if you would say to Stevie, what would you rather win a, a, a tour one or, or um, one of them? I think you'd definitely pick a tour. It just seems everybody here <coughs> um, and and the crowd, it, it just yeah, it just feels there's, you know no real rhyme or reason. There's obviously same ranking points. As <coughs> prize money was actually more in the Grand Slam than than we have yeah. here this weekend. But for whatever reason, this this just ha feels that extra. I, I, and I think for Stevie as well. I think it's sort of almost yeah. hinted at that in, in interviews we've had from him in the past. So it will be a big deal for him to win this. I'm not sure if this red goes off the jaw, off the yellow maybe. Um. <clears throat> Even if it doesn't, it'd be nice to get it away from that middle bag. Really good. And Nessie plays um, loss of turn shot and stands by the black. Yeah. Loss of turn. Yeah, take one of Stevie's off the table. Keep his on. Building a numbers advantage here. Yeah, because I don't think that top yellow next to the, the red will pass the other yellow. So even if Stevie was to pot this one at the top of the table, it's very unlikely he's going to clear. So Unless it's a double. Yeah. It's very tight to that red if it is. Uh, couldn't make the double. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Yellow's gone safe as well. And continuing just to keep it tight. No point in him chasing a bad one here. These reds aren't great, but he definitely has a tactical advantage. Yeah, the way this frame going, I, f I think Arfan's big favourite for it, to be honest. Um, I mean, even if Stevie wanted to push a boat and go for it, that black's still tied up. Um, it I mean wouldn't be terrible if he could make the one he's playing now a last ball, but he can't obviously can't do that from here. And he's got a tied up yellow at the top as well, so there's just nothing. I don't think Arfan was overly worried that he left that shot on. Yeah, I mean, S Stevie could, if he can play the back double now, um, yeah, he's just looking to, to see if he can play the back double and just have some sort of some sort of shot um, to cannon a blackout, he, he might as well go for it because he's definitely second favourite if he doesn't. That's a great shot. Needs it to Doesn't up. want it to be straight. And he's got just enough angle here. And the red's there as well if he wants to create a bit more angle and punch it off a red. I think Stevie's going to play for the black in the bottom right. Let's get over to the side rail and have a shot. Oh, he's gone for the cannon. Ooh. Oh, he's blocked the pocket. Good effort, that one. You can see the eight ball. He's not get it going big, anywhere. He's looking at a big bag in the middle pocket. That was a great effort from Stevie there, out of nowhere. Stevie's the sort of player that's gonna that wouldn't oh he can't he can't see enough of the black man. He's still half a chance here. Might have had a touch here. I think Arfan can just see the red. It was eight ball first. Just. Well, he's been a bit lucky there. Yeah, even though Arfan can see it, it's still hard to play a good safety. 
Yeah, I think our fans just got to clip off the red that you can see, just as thin as he can, and just put the white anywhere near the middle bag and hope to get the snooker. Yeah, and he's worried that if he doesn't get the snooker, you then are potentially leaving the big bag double in the right centre, though. Oh, yeah, he hasn't played the snooker, but... I think he could have just clipped off that as thin as he... Oh, really thin and, and tried to get the snooker, but he's thought didn't feel comfy about it, so he's just left Stevie a double. I guess you feel he's feeling if he plays off it and he's going to use the side cushion more and it could if he overhits it or he gets it wrong, he could get yeah. a little bit too far to the right and maybe leave something easier on, but it would be a bad shot for that to happen. I think Stevie should definitely play this black at dead weight, give it every chance it's got. Oh, he's oh. gone for the top left. That red must be just that little bit further above the right centre pocket than it looks to us. Yeah, no, so I was thinking about playing uh, the black um, at the top left. Just top, top left? Oh, sorry, top left, yeah, yeah. Just sort of dead weight to give the pocket every chance, but he's played it a bit more firm. But, um, yeah, maybe for leave half hand dead straight on this. He's then got to play a good shot, but, I mean, I, I think half hand I'll just roll this in. Oh, he's playing safe again. Thinking there from our fan is that if he plays that one, he bumps it away from an awkward place. It didn't go in the right centre pocket, but you're not. He hasn't managed to open it up. Not the best of shots from our fan. He has got the snooker, but he would have liked those two reds just to pop open. Yeah. I mean, you don't want Stevie having too many goes at this black. I know it's not easy, but I think if Stevie plays this at a bit of pace. You are right, he's, there's sometimes when you feel like you have to. Again, he's got very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's sometimes when you feel you're almost inviting trouble. That last one felt like you're inviting trouble. Well, he, I guess he has, because he's landed mm. very good here, Stevie. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think if our fans playing Chris Mellon there, he's not leaving him the one cushion escape, but... Um, yeah, I mean... It, w it wasn't an easy finish, but I think if, if he'd have played the... I think I would have gone game there, but you know our fans just trying to keep it a bit tight. We saw that from him in the Pro Cup when he played Jordan Shepherd. He just, at times, just got a little bit negative, and I'm not saying it was the wrong choice of shot. Far from it, but he's, uh, we've seen him do it before, and it's come back to bite him. Has he left it? I think he's got a shot at the top anyway. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, he has. Yeah, he's left this. No. Nope. Definitely had that on. He missed it thick. What will our fan do this time? That right at the bottom now. Not very nice. I think our fan's playing the snooker again here. He's left, left it on again. again, and he's put a red horrible again. Yeah, just can't can't play the killer safety to then win the frame. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think the snooker was probably the right shot on this occasion on because. But two or three times before, maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe should have gone game. Fancy Stevie to get this. Oh, completely miss it and miss hits it, and our fan is going to get cue ball in hand. I bet he wishes he hadn't put that red on the left hand side cushion now. Yeah, our fan will obviously be attacking that red first. He doesn't fancy it down the rail, so he's going to play the cannon. I know a lot of people have played the red down the rail there first, but I think it. I think I would have m maybe played the cannon as well. I just I know the pockets are playing a bit more generous. But it's you must say, it can't go wrong there. Yeah. Cube on hand, you give yourself the absolute perfect angle. Yeah, and then yeah, he's just going to put these two in the middle, and then and leave himself a natural angle to go down for the one on the rail. So yeah, you can't really argue with that. Drop this in, leave natural angle. Always oh, going up for the top one. 
played nicely. Yeah, it's perfect. Our fan's queue is, it looks nearly blue, doesn't it? Because of the the chalk or, or whatever, for whatever reason. At the top, yeah. Yeah. He's been grinding on the practice table. And an excellent frame on the board for him. Had to be very patient indeed and dodged a couple of bullets from Stevie Dempsey there. But he does get the frame on the board. And oh, with fascinating opening 20 minutes, well, nearly 20 minutes into this match. We've only played three frames. Yeah. Yeah, if he gets the ball here, Simon, I think it's pretty much game over. Oh, it's a brilliant break. And he's dry. It's going to be dry. But look at look at the layout here. It's almost every single break that Stevie's had in this match has left a horrible layout. Our fans got to smash this one down the bottom rail and, and try and dislodge the other red here. He's got no other choice. Oh, what have we played there, our fan? I think he was hoping that the red would stay over the pocket and then he could do it off this one, but... Couldn't have come out much worse for him. Yeah, Stevie's going to be delighted with that shot from our fan. Keep your eyes on the clock here. Stevie Dempsey is incredible at managing that clock. Stevie's... Uh, I think if he can just... Just try and put the white somewhere near the, the three on the left-hand side rail. Um, just so our fan has to waste another shot. Might just clip off this and run it down, run it down the rail. Yeah, nice shot, Stevie. It's our fan not hanging about <laughs> at all. He's taking a risk there, and it looks rash. He looks like he's coming to the table and just kind of petulantly smashing them, but he's not. He, he has to play that quickly. He has to kind of open everything up and maybe almost force Stevie's hand here. Yeah, I think Stevie's just probably going to try and put the six in open play. Yeah, remember, there's no golden breaks in play yeah. at the Pro Series, so it's not a case of just leaving, you know, one second on the clock, one, you know, if Arfan was to get to the table. He has to leave enough time for a clearance, so Stevie Potts, the open one's here. He's pretty much done. He could, he could almost just put these... And just nestle onto the yellow on the side, uh, the one, the awkward one, and just make our fan waste some more time, or, or try and take out a good finish. Well, yeah, this this game's over now. I think he's going to waste another minute on these. Would you risk playing the yellow off the yellow at the top, to, or just pot it and then play safe off the one at the top? I suppose no, it depends on how much time's on the clock. I mean, here, yes, Stevie can't lose now. He's just got to pot these three, three reds. Roll into the red on the top rail, and he's won. Because our fan's got 40 seconds to to clear twice, which isn't going to happen. He might well play into it, but he's still left himself a nice pot. He is going to try and break it out. Hasn't quite come out for him, but the work is done here for Stevie. Look at that, 50 seconds left on the clock. He's going to get another 10 seconds here, and you called it, yep. Tom. He's going to only get 40 seconds at this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at our fan who was poised to jump out of his chair. Knew exactly what was going on there. 30 seconds then. And he needs two clearances. Yeah, I feel for our fan here because he was right back in it and then he's just made a time foul. Could have cost him a title. Well, it has cost him a title. Yeah. Well done, Stevie. That will be that. And he's going to come forward and shake hands. Stevie Dempsey is a Pro Series champion for the first time. His third title with Ultimate Paul. Four finals on the trot. And finally, the Irishman gets his hands on a Pro Series title.